Learning to code in 2025 is never like how it used to be now. AI is literally changing the game. But does that mean coding is dead? Should you ever if even still bother learning it, right? If you're thinking about getting into coding or leveling up yourself, then you need to hear these eight rules today. These are the same rules that I've used to grow my businesses and they're exactly what I would do if I had to start from scratch today again. Okay. Hey, my name is Derek and I'm the founder of Sigma School, jo Jobier and Northstack AI. And I've been in tech for over five years, bootstrap my businesses to over 80,000 US dollars per month in a small team. And now I actively work with AI and I've helped thousands learn to code, land jobs, and even start their own tech businesses. So trust me when I say I know what works and what's just noise today, to be honest. By the end of this video, you will walk away with a clear strategy on how to approach coding in 2025. We know exactly what to focus on, what to ignore, what mistakes to avoid, and how to actually use code and how to actually learn coding to get ahead in life. No fluff, just straight up actionable advice only, okay? So the first rule here is to learn problem solving, not just syntax. A lot of beginners, I know this, even myself back in the days, make the mistake of obsessing over syntax. But here's the truth, syntax is the easy part. What really makes it matter the most is problem solving. When you're stuck, how do you solve this algorithm to make this problem solve? What is the inputs you put in to give you the right outputs that the function expects? Coding is just a tool to solve real world problems. I always tell my students at Sigma School, if you only memorize code, you will get replaced by AI. That's a very base layer of the whole pyramid here, right? But if you know how to break down problems, think logically and think of the whole infrastructure of the system, you will always be valuable. So you just start using tools like need code or code wars. These platforms help you train your problem solving muscles. Yes, maybe you can say things like, okay, you know what? AI can also solve need code challenges. That's true but it doesn't take away from the fact that you need to solve these problems to build your problem solving muscles it's like saying you know ai can lift heavy things so i no longer need to go to the gym that makes no sense right so now this is for you to build your problem solving muscles and it's not just for you to memorize syntax so the next thing will be to start building real projects early on theory will only get you so far you need to build real things as soon as possible. The moment you complete basic syntax, immediately start building real projects, real projects that you can showcase to people that you can see in front of you that actually works. When I first started, I built a simple website for local businesses. It wasn't perfect, right, honestly, but guess what? That project was my first paying customer, right? It started by saying, I wanted a website that says my restaurant details or whatsoever, right? But later on, they started adding me this, oh, I wanna add a form, I wanna add a booking system, I wanna add this and that and this, and, and I had to just like iterate on the fly to edit these features on the website, and they just started paying me more more and the best part is I also learn on the job right so instead of saying hey I want to learn react whatever that means right I just go and say I want to maybe build a portfolio and you can use react to it right you say I want to automate a task and you use python for it you say I want to create a tool that can solve so think about creating a tool that, that solves a problem in your daily life and that is first right and the text that you use to solve it, it comes next not saying I want to learn react in full stop no not that way. so next thing would be to you know think about AI it's here we all gonna accept it use it do not fear it right some people panic about AI taking over coding jobs and here's my take right here's my take AI is a tool it's not a threat the best developers in 2025 and beyond will not be the ones avoiding AI. They will be the ones leveraging it. At Northstack AI, we automate our sales workflows for businesses. Without AI-assisted coding tools like Cursor or Copilot, we will be taking five times longer to build things. That will do so fast every single week, right? So instead of avoiding AI, use it to write better code, debug faster, and build more efficiently. So you can try things like, you know, just start with GitHub Copilot, Cursor, ChatGPT for debugging. The next rule will be to learn how the internet works, okay? Too many developers learn frameworks and build front end and build back end, but they do not understand the fundamentals of how web development works. To understand web, you need to understand the internet. If you don't know what happens when you type a URL in a browser, you are setting up yourself to failure. So the key concept to understand here will be things like HTTP requests, APIs, databases, authentication, the cloud, what are these things, right? What's the front end, what's the back end? These are concepts that are quite easy to understand. You don't need to go deep into it and build your own software stack, right? You just gonna understand how it works. These are all best practices that as is already there, you're just gonna learn it. I once had a student who knew React inside out, but struggled when we asked him to build a simple login system. Why? Because he didn't understand it, how authentication work under the hood. So you can use different resources like CS50 by Harvard. It's free on YouTube. It's a great way to understand core computer science fundamentals. Spend 10 hours on it and you're done. Next thing would be to get comfortable with debugging, right? The real difference between a beginner and experienced coder. It's honestly, if you ask me today, debugging skills. Errors happen all the time. No matter where you are, no matter how experienced you are, there will be errors, right? It's how you deal with them that actually matters. In my early days, I spent hours stuck on bugs that a simple Google search could have solved. Now I debug like a pro, like a detective, right? First, I isolate the problem, then I Google smartly and and then if I'm stuck, I ask ChatGPT, right? Pro tip here is to learn how to read your console, read your error messages properly because half the battle is just understanding what they're trying to tell you and also being able to uh, prompt it and being able to communicate with your own code in my way. 
try to understand where the error lies and fix those errors one by one. That's it. Uh, next thing will be understand command line and Git, right? If you are still clicking around your files instead of using the terminal, you are slowing yourself down. I know so many uni students who graduate out of universities not knowing how to use GitHub. If someone tells me they can't use GitHub, basically, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm like, what are you doing, right? Basically, Git and command lines are essential skills in 2025. You need it, right? A quick story here is I, I once worked with a junior developer who didn't know how to use Git properly. And there was one accidental Git push dash dash force, which wiped out two days of work for the entire team. Don't be that guy. Rule seven would be to network and share your work, right? Your skills alone will not get you hired. People don't know you exist. People need to know you exist. The best opportunities I've gotten were not from job boards. They were from connections of people who knew me or people who saw my work online. So post your projects online. We have a thing where we encourage our students every time they complete a little project, post it on LinkedIn. And every time they post their project, we pay them money to, to do it. That's what we do at Sigma School, right? So post your projects on LinkedIn, post it on Twitter, post it on GitHub, write about your learning, share your findings, share your difficulties, build in public, right? People so that they know where you're at, you can see your progress and they can connect you when. So they remember you as that guy who's learning to code, a guy who's making quick progress. And when they need you, they'll think about you. And when they think about you, that's good enough, right? You may not close the deal, but at least you now have doors open for you, right? So rule number eight is finally sticking to it, consistent to it, because most people quit too early. They expect results in maybe weeks or when it takes months, right? Coding is like fitness. You, you can spend 24 hours in the gym today and you will not out of nowhere get abs. It's that one hour grind every single day that really, really builds that mind muscle connection. So when I built Sigma School, it took time before we started seeing success. We, but because we stuck with it, we helped hundreds and thousands break into tech. Hence, the same applies to go coding journey. So the tip here is code daily, even if it's just 30 minutes, code daily because progress compounds over time. So should you learn to code in 2025? Yes, but only if you follow the right approach, only if you're doing it for the right reasons. There are a lot of people in the past few years where they learned to code just because they wanted a good job, they didn't enjoy coding. These people will, I, I think they will struggle in, in this era. But if you're the kind of person who lets, lets go into deep waters and, and solve coding problems and figure things out, right? The world needs you. The world still needs great problem solvers. We need builders. We need innovators. So if you're serious about coding, check out Sigma School. We help you learn to code in three months and get hired or it's free. And if you find this video valuable, just drop a comment with your biggest takeaway. See you in the next one.